بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Brothers and sisters in Islam قال الله تعالى يا أيها الإنسان إنك كادح إلى ربك كدحا فملاقيه O mankind, O human beings You are in a state of constant traveling That is a way to explain it Or you're laboring, you're doing a lot of things But yet you're traveling, you're journeying and the destination is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day. And you will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that which you have worked, did, and said. Brothers and sisters in, in, in Islam, Al Fudayl ibn Ayyad. Rahimahullah, one day met a man and he asked him, how old are you? He said, 60 years. He said to the man, since 60 years you have been traveling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're about to arrive very close. 60 years, meaning some more years and you will be there. The man cried, مَا العمل يَا أَبَا عَلِي قَالَ أَحْسِنْ فِيمَا بَقِيَ يَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ لَكَ مَا مَضَى Do good with what is left in the journey. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive what, you, what went wrong in the past. The distance back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be covered by your heart it's not a physical travel السير إلى الله يكون بالقلب the limb it's not like the physical travel that we we do and for your heart to travel safely without any interruption and to take the right path back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it has to look exactly like a bird a head 
and two wings. You see how the bird or the airplane, your heart must be like that. Must have a head. And again, I'm talking metaphorically here. I'm not talking physically. Your heart must have a head and two wings. The head is the love that you have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when you normally love somebody, when you normally sub love someone, you like to go to them, you like to travel to them. That love takes you there. Man ahabba liqa'a Allah, ahabba Allah liqa'a. That you love to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you're longing, and you can't wait till you see your Creator in Jannah and in the day of resurrection. The two wings, and this is my subject today, one of them is called fear, and the other one is called hope. So you must have a head, which is the love, and two wings, they must be extended like this. Fear, hope. With this you can fly back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the love only, and you hear them saying, Oh Allah, I love you just for you. And if you know that I love you because of your Jannah, do not give me your Jannah. And if you know that I love you because I'm afraid of your hill, place me in your hill. Hada Zindiq. Someone who says this is Zindiq. Hada, not the proper belief, not the pro proper journey. No, we love Allah and we fear Allah and we hope in His mercy. Allah told us this. He said, Tell my servants that I'm the forgiving and let them know that my punishment is painful. And how in the world you say to Allah, I do want your Jannah. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Hawlaha nudandin. When the Bedouin asked him, I don't understand all this dua that you're making you and Mu'adh. Qala ma taqool, what do you say when you make dua? Qala wallahi ma aqool, the only thing I say, I ask Allah al-Jannah and I seek refuge from hell. He said, Hawlaha nudandin. All our dua is around this. Now you come and say, I don't want your Jannah, Ya Rabb. The Ibrahim al-Khalil, da'a, waj'alni min warathati Jannah al-Na'im. Also those who worship Allah with the fear only, the fear. قال العلماء حروري خوارج يكفرون بالكبيرة. When they, when you increase your fear, you end up despairing. They believe that if you commit a sin, your iman is gone. No chance for you to repent. حجروا رحمة رب العالمين. They confined the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he said, I forgive all sins. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ And there are those who worshipped Allah only with hope. But technically it's not called hope. It's called wishful thinking. They hope in the mercy of Allah only. And guess what? This stopped them from working, from praying, from fasting, from making, uh, paying zakah, performing hajj. They said Allah is forgiven. Allah is, will forgive my sins. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Al-Mu'min Al-Muwahid, the true believer, the one who possess the proper Tawheed, worships Allah because he loves Allah he fears Allah, he hopes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Khawf, 
Fear is like a whip. When you sin, you fear your sin. You're afraid to die as a sinner. That mobilizes your forces to repent. But if there is no fear, you're going to go on sinning. If there is only hope. You're not going to repent. You're not going to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But watch it. Do not allow this sin, do not allow this fear to cause you to despair, to give up on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you have the repentance in place, when you start acting, then hope comes in. You begin hoping in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters in Islam, this is the last Jum'ah in Ramadan. And this subject is related to fear and hope. The scholars asked this question, should the two wings, fear and hope, should be even? Or should one of them be up sometimes? They said one of the occasions when your wing of, he of uh, 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 your wing of fear should increase is when you're about to deliver an act back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you're about to finish an act of worship, you should start fearing. Fearing what? Was that act performed properly? Was I as sincere as I should be? And this is, by the way, something that Ummuna Aisha radiallahu anha understood from a verse fi surat al mu'minun The verse actually describes the conditions of the believers. Al Hadith fi Sunan al Tirmidhi. The verse says, Walladina yu'tuna ma atu, wa kulubuhum wajila, and nahum ila rabbihim raja'un. The verse doesn't specify what the believers actually do, but here's what, they, what the verse says those who do what they do. Meanwhile, their hearts are trembling, are fearing that they will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Messenger of Allah, is this verse talking about the one who steals, the one who kills, the one who cheats, and he is afraid that in the day of resurrection, he will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will punish him subhanahu for what he did. He said, لا يا بنت الصديق لا يا عائشة No, rather this verse talks about those who pray, those who fast, those who perform hajj, and they're afraid that their act would not be accepted. And this is so important to dismiss arrogance from the heart, to humble you when you're about to conclude the act. Because remember, Satan used to be the most pious and righteous. And that piety and righteousness was also the source of arrogance and pride to be instilled in his heart. Likewise you, if you look at your ibadah and you say, Masha Allah, I've been standing behind the Imam every night. Masha Allah, I paid so much in zakah. Masha Allah, I paid so much in sadaqah. Masha Allah, I did good. La, 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 la. This is not the way to deliver the act to Allah. Because regardless of how much you do, huwa al-a'la, al-ali, al-muta'al, nothing. Nothing can be fitting His Majesty Subhana. Fi Mustadrak al-Hakim, Hadith Salman al-Farisi, Radiallahu anhu, 
The scale of deeds will be placed in the land of gathering in the day of resurrection. And the pan of the scale will be enough to accommodate the heavens and the earth and what's in between them. لو وضع في الميزان السماوات والأرض وما فيهن لكفتهم فتقول الملائكة The angels will say to Allah لمن هذا يا رب يا رب who will come with an act that will fill that pan of the scale فيقول سبحانه he will say سبحانه لمن شئت من عبادي to the one whom I will of out of my servants look what the angels will say Subhanak, ma abadnaka haqqa ibadatik. Subhanak, we have not worshipped you enough. And these are the angels. La ya'asoon Allah ma amarahum. They never disobey. They never live a moment of disobedience. Yusabbihoon al-layla wal-nahar. La yafturoon. They praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night. They don't get tired. And yet they will say in the day of resurrection, مَا عَبَدْنَاكَ حَقَّ عِبَادَتِكَ For the wing of fear, when the month of Ramadan is about to finish, is important to be increased, that you question and you doubt, so that you cause yourself to be humble. The second thing, you do a lot of istighfar. That is why, brothers and sisters in Islam, شُرِعَ الْإِسْتِغْفَارِ بعد التسليم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله from this صلاة والله has it been mandatory يا رب يدون يا رب you deserve much better than this يا رب you deserve much better than this the whole time I'm thinking about my wife my kids my job I didn't even reflect upon al-Fatiha, Ya Rabb. Wallahi, has it been its mandatory, Ya Rabb? It, it, it's like someone, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى وَهَذَا قِيَاسُ الْأَوْلَى وَهُوَ يَجُوزُ فِي جَنْبِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى Imagine someone you, whom you love so much, so much, and you want to bring him a gift, a very precious, valuable gift, but you don't have money, you don't have funds. And you go and buy a very simple gift. Can you, ya akhi, you deserve much better than this. Ya. Please take this from me. I love you so much. Just take this. Astaghfir. I'm sorry, I can't get. That is the feeling. Undur ila ibadat al hajj. Hajj. Hajj is a pillar. You come back from it like a newborn. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Man hajj falam yarfuth wa lam yafsuh. Raja min dunubih ka yawmi waladathu ummu. He come back like a newborn. وَقَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ الْحَجُّ عَرَفَةً The main pillar of Hajj is the day of Arafah. حِينَمَا يَتَنَزَّلُ اللَّهُ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends in a way that suits His Majesty. And we affirm Allah descends. We affirm the attribute that Allah descends. نُثْبِتُ الصِّفَةِ وَلَكِنْ لَا نُشَبِّهِ But we do like in Allah to His creation. Allah descends in a way that suits His Majesty, that suits His divine essence. Nor we try to find out how He descends, Subhanah. We don't, we don't try to figure out how He descends. He descends and He looks at His servants in, in the day of Arafah. في أرض العرفة انظروا إلى عبادي. Look at my servants. أتاوني شعثا غبرة. They came to me disheveled, dusted. What do they want? Bear witness, my angels. Inni qad ghafartu lahum. Indeed, I have forgiven their sins. Look at the Quran. Thumma afidu min haythu afad al-nas. Wa astaghfirullah. Even after this, when you're coming down from Arafah, say astaghfirullah. 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 Unzur ila ahli al-ihsan. Al-muhsinin. The highest rank, the highest level in the religion. إنهم كانوا قبل ذلك محسنين كانوا قليلا من الليل ما يهجعون وبالأسحار هم يستغفرون.
يقول الحسن رحمه الله سبحان الله قضوا الليل they spend the night in صلاه in تهجد they hardly slept and when the sun is about to rise they sit and they say استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله why عمل القلب عبودية الخوف the servitude of fear you're afraid سبحان الله once it comes to Ramadan شرع لنا نبينا the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم legislated for us another way to say استغفر الله besides saying استغفر الله another practical way to say استغفر الله what is it? زكاة الفطر صدقة الفطر يقول ابن عباس أن النبي فيما أخرج أبي داود أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فرض زكاة الفطر The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم made زكاة الفطر mandatory look طعمة للمسكين to feed the needy of the Muslims مساكين المسلمين ومطهرة للصائم من الرفث واللغو and it cleanses your shortcomings during your fasting if you got angry because you're not supposed to get angry remember when we started Ramadan we shared with you hadith Abi Hurair al-hadith al-ilahi فإذا كان يوم صوم أحدكم فلا يرفث ولا يصخب ولا يجهل وإن سابه أحد أو قاتله فليقل إني صائم إني صائم we reminded you with this at the beginning that when it is a fasting day don't be loud be quiet don't harm people don't hurt people and, and if somebody attacks you somebody harms you just remind him listen brother I'm fasting I'm fasting please just leave me in peace no problem a lot of us were unable to fulfill that we got upset we got upset with the wife we got upset with the kids we got upset with the, with the court Come, comes in it Sadaqatul Fitr cleanses you cleanses you cleanses your, 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 your fasting from this فالشاهد brothers and sisters in Islam حال when you're about when you're about to deliver an act of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to lock and shut the entry of shaitan to your heart so that you don't become so proud of it how many Muslims we hear that uh, brothers I make hajj every year every year I go to hajj I give him ten thousand dollars in, in, zak in zakah last uh, Wallahi, by Allah, a disobedient in the sight of Allah is much better than this man. Then the asl fil ubudiya aslan is dhul. Servitude is to humble yourself. So when you question the quality of the act is important. Why also fear? Another important tool here, another important service that does it, that does for you. How many of you are so much worried? What I'm going to do after Ramadan? Ya the whole Ramadan I was in the masjid. MashaAllah the jama'ah. MashaAllah the qiyam. MashaAllah the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has healed me. The shayateen are chained. The, the gates of Jannah are open. The gates of hell are locked. What I'm going to do after Ramadan? Yeah, it should worry you. Wallahi, it should worry you. One of the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard him saying, يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلبي على دينك Oh Allah, you rotate hearts You change hearts ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا Look at dua ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب Oh Allah, do not cause our hearts to deviate Ya Rabb, I don't want to go astray after this. I don't want to go astray. I don't want to go back to sinning, Ya Rabb. Firm. Grant my heart firmness on your religion, in your deen. This is also because of fear. You're afraid of that. You're afraid to go astray. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when one of his wives asked him, Ya Rasool Allah, awatataqallabu al-qulub? Do hearts rotate, change? Yes. مَا مِنْ قَلْبِ إِنَّ قُلُوبَ بَنِيِّ آدَمْ 
the hearts of the children of Adam are between two fingers of Allah. He rotates them as he wants. The wing of fear is so important right now. We still have a couple of days left of the month. Astaghfirullah, a lot of istighfar. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Asking Allah to accept from you. Imagine Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam after they raised the foundation of the Kaaba, building a house for Allah. And when we talk about the Kaaba, he will like in awal a bait in Wudi Alin Nasil and Ledi Bibakata Mubarak and Wahuda Lil Alamin, Fihi Ayatum Bayinat, Makamu Ibrahim. In the house of Allah, there are clear signs for you to reflect upon. But there is one special sign. You know what it is? The station of Ibrahim. A lot of Muslims don't realize what is the station of Ibrahim. The station of Ibrahim is his feet printed on a rock. Why? Allah commanded Ibrahim alayhi salam to raise the walls of the Kaaba. Ya Ibrahim, raise the walls of the Kaaba. Normally to fulfill this command is sufficient that you raise the wall as far as you can reach. I'm on the ground, I'm going to raise. This is Ya Rab, how far I can place the last brick. Ihsan, Ihsan, Ya Ismail, go look for a rock. And he made himself higher than the earth what is known Sa'ala in Egypt that you place yourself in higher so he can raise the wall more and while he's being handed over the rock from Ismail so heavy his feet printed in that rock Hassan yet in spite of this huh وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَعِيلِ رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّ يَا رَبْ أَكْسَبْتْ فَرْمْ مِيَ وَمَيْ صَنْ يَا رَبْ شوف العبودية لوك عبودية الذل يا رب even so I did all of this you have to accept it يا رب فجانب الخوف يا إخوة is so important now they said that جانب الرجاء but before I move to Janib al-Raja, the wing of hope, I want to tell you that be careful that you do not fear so much that you end up doing something wrong or you end up despairing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His mercy. Hadith and the Muslim and Bukhari, Hadith Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu, أسرف رجل على نفسه. Look at the fear. What did to this man? Someone who became so excessively disobedient to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He overdid it. In some of the wording of this hadith, كان يعمل نباشا للقبور. Imagine when you go and bury your deceased, he would go and dig the grave. Steal the coffin and he would go sell it. That's what he earns. This is how he earns his life. By the way, the one who steals the grave, why? Because the grave is the house of the deceased. Imagine he was so much afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, he called upon his children and he said to them, when he was about to die, Ya Bani, my children, what kind of a father was I to you? They said, you were a good father. You really took a good care of us. Father-son relationship, you were excellent. Regardless of what you used to do out there. He said, now I want a favor from you. إِذَا أَنَا مِتُّ When I die, إِحْرِقُونِي Burn my body. ثُمَّ اسْحَقُونِي then smash my bones. Then wait for a windy day. Thumma 
Wait for a windy day, take half of my ashes and cast it in the sea and the other half in the earth. Look at that statement he made. وَهَذِهِ الَّتِي أَنْجَتْ الْعُذْرُ بِالْجَهْرِ علماء العقيدة, the scholars of Aqeedah, they use this hadith to establish that you cannot label somebody to be a disbeliever if he is ignorant. In one of the wording of this hadith, أَنَّ هَذَا الرَّجُلْ كَانَ عَلَى التَّوْحِيدِ This man was a Muslim. He was not a kafir. But look what he said. He believes that by this, he can escape from Allah. Then he's telling his children what? فَإِنَّهُ إِنْ قَذِرَ اللَّهُ عَلَيَّ لَيُعَذِّبَنِي عَذَابًا لَيُعَذِّبُهُ أَحَدًا مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ If Allah is able to bring me back, He will punish me a punishment no one, no one else will receive. Jahl, jahl. هو لا يدري. He doesn't know that Allah can do this. They did that. His children executed his will, which is wrong. According to our Sharia, you must look at the will. If the will is condoned by the Sharia, then you execute it. Even if it is the will of your beloved one, your father tells you that do this for me after I die, and he begs you, mashi, 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 and don't do it. Don't do it. The Sharia is above everybody in Islam. But these kids, they executed his will. Then what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the knower of the present and the future. This will happen in the future. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about it. Allah commanded earth, bring out his ashes, his body. Commanded the sea, bring back his body. Here he is standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah asked him this question. Ma hamalak? Why did you do this? Look. قَالَ وَاللَّهِ مَخَافَتُكَ يَا رَبِّ Wallahi يَا رَبِّ I was afraid of you. I was afraid of you. قَالَ خُذُوهُ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ Take him to Jannah. Imagine, the man, all what he did is the servitude of fear. Even so, the application with the limbs. وَدَخَلَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered kama inda al-Tirmidhi hadith Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu an into the room of a young man who is going through the agonies of death waladun shab yahtadir faqala kayfa tajiduk how do you feel what are you feeling right now qala ya rasool Allah akhafu dhunubi وَأَرْجُ اللَّهِ I fear my sins and I hope in Allah's mercy. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at him and he said, By Allah, those two being in the heart of a Muslim at this time of death, لا يجتمع The fear of the sins, the hope for the mercy of Allah, لا يجتمع في قلب مؤمن في هذا الموطن إِلَّا وَسَلَّمَهُ اللَّهُ مِمَّا يَخَافْ وَأَعْطَاهُ مَا يَرْجُو Those two, the fear of the sins, the hope for Allah's mercy, together at this time when you're experiencing death in the heart of a Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will secure that person from what he fears and he will give him what he is hoping for, which is his mercy. الخوف يا إخوة, الخوف. أولئك يسارعون في الخيرات ويدعوننا رغبا ورهبا. The righteous and the pious تتجافى جنوبهم عن المضاجع يدعون ربهم خوفا وطمعا. الخوف والرجاء. The servitude of fear is important. Is important. But be careful. Don't allow it to take it to despair. It should serve only mobilizing you to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم. If I may ask the brothers to accommodate the brothers standing, if we can move a little bit up, there is a lot of space. So please, if we can move up a little bit, so the brothers standing, they can sit down, inshallah. 
الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وأزواجه أمهات المؤمنين الرجاء هوب There are three types of hope. Two of them are praiseworthy and one is blameworthy. The two types of hope which are praiseworthy, Raja'u Ta'i'a, the hope of the obedient that Allah would accept his obedience. At the end of the day, we don't know whether Allah accepts or not. When you call a jurist, it's wrong to tell him, Sheikh, I'm doing this act. Is it accepted? I don't know if it is accepted. I can tell you whether it is valid or not. You came with the pillars, you performed the pillars, you fulfilled the pillars, you fulfilled the duties, you fulfilled the recommended, then it's valid. But accepted? Allah knows best. Nobody knows. The first type of hope, Raja'u Ta'i'a, the hope of the obedient that Allah would accept his obedience. The second one, which is praiseworthy, Raja'u Al-Asi, Ida Tab, the hope of the disobedient when he repents that Allah would accept his repentance. That someone is disobedient, Ja'a bit Tawbah, he repented, you're hoping that Allah will accept you back. Here is the one that is blameworthy. Raja'un madhmum. The hope which is not accompanied with actions. Someone who's sitting doesn't pray. They go like, Allah is in my heart. And back in our culture, they go like, Galbi abyad. Wallahi ya sheikh. Ani galbi abyad. O ma ba zish haddu. O ma andish ma shakil khalas. Ana bas mushkilti ma ba salish khamas salawat fil yom. Ya habibi. صليش خمس مرات في اليوم ده أنت لا كافر لا فاسق أبيض إيه وأسود إيه تقول ماي الله إز إن ماي هارت أم سو كلين أي دون هارم إني بادي أي دون دو إني بادي أي جاست دون براي فايف تايمز ا دي براي فايف تايمز ا دي ده هناك من حكم بكفرك there are scholars who ruled that this person is a disbeliever يا أخي let's not get into that debate you know what you're between a فاسق that person is between a fasik or kafir. One of the two. Fin, uh, your heart is, is clean. What your heart is clean? It's salah. The salah had the imad al deen. Fa, they are hope. When, when you talk to them, you say, Allah ghafur rahim. Allah is forgiving, is merciful. Ya Sidi, okay. But Allah is also shadid al iqab. Allah is severe in punishment. Both are in the revelation, both are in the Quran. لماذا تأخذ نصوص؟ Why do you take text that fits you? قال لي أفتؤمنون ببعض الكتاب وتكفرون ببعض؟ You, you want to just take what suits you and the rest is, is left for who? لا, it's a package deal. You know when you go buy a package, you tell you, listen, it's a package. But I don't like this item. No, you're going to have to buy it. You're going to have to take it because it's a package deal. فهذا رجاء is not even worthy of calling it رجاء. سماه الله تمني. النصارى يقول لك ايه وقالوا لن يدخل الجنة إلا من كان هودا أو نصارى they say that the only people who will be admitted to Jannah Jews and Christians تلك أمانيهم this is wishful thinking ليس بأمانيكم ولا أماني أهل الكتاب it is not based on your wishful thinking Muslims that ما شاء الله my heart is clean لا 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 من يعمل سوءا يجز به Whosoever acts righteously, he will be rewarded. Ah, the problem, the problem, the hope. Ma huwa listen. There is a dilemma here that you need to grasp. What is the dilemma? Your amal doesn't give you jannah. Your amal, your actions doesn't give you jannah. If you get that dilemma, you will understand what I'm trying to say. What? قال صلى الله عليه وسلم اعلموا أنه لا يدخل أحدكم الجنة بعمله. Rest assured that none of you will enter Jannah because of your actions. 
ولا انت يا رسول الله ولا انا not even me not even you messenger of Allah not even me so what do we get what, what will get us jannah الا ان يتغمدني الله برحمته الرجاء برحمه الله the hope in the mercy of Allah but now for you to qualify to receive the mercy from Allah you must act فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل read the last verse in surah al-kahf if you're truly hoping then work then strive and don't belittle any act don't belittle any act regardless regardless المرأة البغي يعني I cannot imagine that someone who works as a prostitute her job and to تاجر بأرضها her job is to work as a prostitute she earns money from prostitution huh? you, you think giving a drink to a dog giving a drink to a dog would be sufficient to take care of this what is this wallah wallah if you if you give drinks to 1000 dogs ما يمشي one زنيه one, one adultery one time of adultery that that zina kabira fi wajh Allah la ana aghir wallah aghir one you go and give a drink to a dog what got her the mercy what got her the, the forgiveness forgiveness ar rahma ar rahma ar raja Hope in the mercy in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hope in the mercy in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They also say that when you're healthy, when, mashallah, wealthy and, and doing good, let the wing of hope lower a little bit. Why? Because when you're healthy, you may have too much hope, which is going to turn you away from acting. But they say, when you're about to die, when you're in the bed of death, and you're about to leave this dunya, the wing of hope must be like this. Up! Jabir ibn Abdullah, radiyallahu anhumah, kama anna al-Bukhari, he said, three days, before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away, I heard him saying, لا يموتن أحدكم إلا وهو يحسن الظن بربه None of you shall die without having high expectations about his Lord. وقال تعالى, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says في الحديث الإلهي, أنا عند ظن عبدي بي I'm the way my servant expect me to be. If you expect him to be merciful, forgiving, he will be merciful and forgiving. If you expect him to be punishing, severe in punishment, he will be likewise. So when you're about to die, think. The predecessors, when they are passing away, they used to tell those who are surrounding them, حدثني بالرخص, talk to me about the forgiveness of Allah, please. And when you're surrounding someone who is dying, don't talk to him about the punishment of Allah. La, talk to him about the vastness, the, how expansive the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So the wing of hope would go up. And Akhtim bihadi fi Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba, Sanaduha Sahih, Qissa, a story. Abu Musa al Ash'ari, radiallahu anhu, when he was dying. Buraida is the one who narrated the hadith, his son. Buraida is the son of Abi Musa. Father, father, Abu Musa said to his children who are surrounding him, Ya Bani, my children, Udhkuru li sahib al raghif Tell me the story of the man or the companion of the loof. The companion of the loof. Qalu ya abana, they said our father, وَمَا صَاحِبُ الرَّغِيفِ What is this? Then he started narrating this story. He said, In the nations before us, there was a righteous, pious person, Rahib. Ya ikhwa, for you to understand that issue of, of celibacy and monkship, when Prophet Isa alayhi salam was sent, he was sent with Tawheed. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. 
the disbelievers started killing those who said la ilaha illallah isa rasulullah i meant la ilaha illallah isa rasulullah so those who do not want the teachings of prophet isa to spread they started killing and crucifying those who believe in the true message of prophet isa law tawhid in la o mas'ul rasul they started persecuting them. Now the only way for them to escape their persecution is to go inside the monastery. Rahbani. So originally they entered with Tawheed. They were in Tawheed. Because I'm going to tell you a story of a man who's in Tawheed. Now we do have monks. Now later on, when the damage happened outside, and this is another issue that he can't be in the cave all the time because it's going to get to you. When the damage happened outside, the people started entering, the monks who started entering into these monasteries, they entered with the Trinity. Oh. So the man that we're talking about here, someone who entered with Tawheed, escaping the persecution to save his Tawheed. He worshipped Allah and, and the monk's celibacy is something that is invented. Invented. Prophet Isa alayhi salam never conveyed it. Qala ta'ala wa rahbaniyatan ibtada'uha and celibacy that they invented. Oh, and it's not condoned by Islam. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa ana ankihu nisa. He said, and I marry women. When one of the three who said, I will give up marrying women, he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa ana ankihu nisa, wa tilka sunnati, and this is my deen. Wa man raghifa man raghifa an sunnati fa laysa minni. He worshipped Allah 24 7 for seven years. Wafi Rawaya 60 years. And he had the habit that half a day every week he would get out of his monastery, go to the market, buy his needs, food, what he needs for the whole week. Imagine one day he's walking out, going to buy his needs. وَقَعَتْ عَيْنَاهُ عَلَى امْرَأَةِ فَفُتِنَ بِهَا He saw a woman, he fallen into the trap. ما هو يا إخوة, I said, قلوب, قلوب, hearts, hearts. Allah knows best. ولذلك, ابن مسعود has a statement, he said, كَانَ مُسْتَنَّنْ فَلْيَسْتَنَّ بِمَنْ قَدْ مَاتْ Whosoever will really follow an example of somebody, find somebody who passed away. I'm standing right here today. Allah knows best what is gonna, Allah is going to do with me tomorrow. I'm going to still be here. Look, the man is worshiping Allah 24-7 for seven years. He fallen into adultery. He spent with her seven nights. So seven years, seven nights, uh, seven, nights seven days. Then, of course, nafs the rebuking, self-blaming soul. How in the world did I do this? Astaghfirullah, this is terrible. Me doing this? Mahawa, when the sin is... And he prescribed upon himself that he would take a step, every step he takes, he would go down and prostrate in the ground and say, Astaghfirullah. Then he would stand up. And walk one step, go down, astaghfirullah. Of course, he doesn't have to do this, but that's how he felt he needs to come out of that sin. The day is about to end. The sun is setting. It's getting dark. He's getting so tired and so, so hungry. He hasn't eaten the whole day. And he spots a group of masakeen standing together. Twelve of them. What is their story? A righteous, rich person would come every day after Maghrib and drops 12 loaves of bread. Each one of them will receive one loaf. One loaf. And he would leave. So he ended up with them. He stood with them. So now the number is 13, not 12. So the rich man came in a hurry. Salamu alaikum. Here is your loaf, 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 loaf. And he left. One of them said, I didn't get my loaf. He actually ran after the man. Come back, I didn't get my loaf. He said, I give him the 12 loaves. This man, our man here, 
the story, the monk, the righteous, the one who fallen into sin. He went in secret and he said, Ya hadha, oh so and so, this is your loaf. Subhanallah, wa yatihi ajalu. Then he dies right after this. He passes away. Here he is in the day of resurrection again. The knower of the unseen told us. The scale. Remember the scale? One pan is hasanat, one pan is sayyat. So in the side of the sayyat, the seven nights of adultery. طيب, what can outweigh the seven nights of adultery? They said the seven years of worship. Salah, fasting, dhikr, seven years. Seven years. <laughs> Guess what? The seven nights of adultery outweighed the seven years of worship. Then they looked and they said, there is that deed with the loaf. The loaf. Let's place that loaf. The loaf, that act, giving the loaf of bread in secret to the miskeen outweighed the seven nights of adultery. And he went to Jannah. Subhanallah. Why not the seven years? Raja. Mahua, listen, with Allah, it doesn't matter what act. It doesn't matter the magnitude of the act. What matters is the act is accompanied with hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This woman who jailed the cat, Imra'a, دخلت النار في هرة. She placed the cat inside the room. لا هي أطعمتها ولا هي تركتها تأكل من خشاش الأرض. She didn't know. She didn't, she didn't think that this sin is going to take her to hell. She hoped too much in her other deeds. She said, this one is nothing. For brothers and sisters in Islam, al-khawf wa raja between fear and hope. You keep flying. Fear and hope until you make it back. Back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hadi al-arwah ila bilad al-afrah. Back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You sin, you get in trouble, you neglect the commands. I'm afraid. What if I die like this? Astaghfirullah. Then you start repenting. Then hope goes up. Then like this. And you keep traveling and flying and traveling and flying until you make it. Allahumma ghfir lana dunubana. Wa israfana fi amrina. Thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan wa arzuqna attiba'a. وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الفتن ما ظهر منها وما بطن